All right, big man, Mr. Robert Phelps. And uh, we were talking the other day about some things that happened over in the Ebony Ballroom over there that's torn down now. I guess that's where the D-Bar is now, over there near Wheeler and uh, Dowling, where the parking lot is where the club sat, I think, if I'm not that's mistaken. Right. Yeah, right around the corner from Conrad Johnson has on right Rose on Rosewood, right? Right, on Rosewood and Dowling. Could you tell me a little bit about Cedric Haywood and what he what he used to do in there? Well, Cedric Haywood left Houston to 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 to, to pursue a, a musical career before my time. Before I I didn't know him when he when he left here, but okay. I knew him when he came back and organized a band. Right. So that's when I, when I met Cedric Haywood. Was he writing all of his charts? Yeah. Everything. He wrote everything. He was a genius, and they said he had a good hand. He was, he was, he should, should have been hired by TSU to teach us uh, uh, some composition class. Right. And arrange it, because he was an excellent writer. But somebody did have sense enough to buy all of his charts, or to assimilate according to rumor. What, who was that? That, that was, that was a, I, I don't know what happened after his death, uh, but the band was, it was, it was uh, uh, I think Sonny Boy Franklin uh, took his band over. After took, his, the, took his book. They took his books, right. Now, now, did you say something about it's possible that the uh, Howard University got some of his charts? That's just, I heard that the, the books were sent up to Howard University for right. the archive. Right, for archive, right. But I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't you have don't, any personal knowledge right, of that. Right, right. You know but now he was in the Ebony Ballroom, nevertheless, and yeah, so after we, he got back, after you know when he when he came back, they organized a band over on Southmore at the bowling alley. It's a bowling alley turned it into a club. That's where we used to have our first rehearsals. But our engagements were on Monday night at the Ebony Club. People would come out. And people would come out, pack dancing. Out. Mostly listening. Listening. Okay. We That's had, interesting. A, a listening audience. Yeah, a listening audience. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, was, okay. It was basically so George, uh, George Washington didn't get out there and dance a little well, bit. Well, they had some dancing, but it wasn't. It wasn't like a, it was a, all dancing. It was mostly the, they wanted to hear the band because you had a lot of, a lot of local stars and things in the band. You know? Right. Uh, and we'll get back to that. But uh, was it a mixed crowd? Integrated crowd? No, primarily it was black. Right? Primarily black. Yeah. Who were some of those stars in that group there, Mr. Phelps? Well, you had, um, uh, I'm trying to remember now, we had, um, was Don, Henry Bouzier. Who Henry Bouzier. Was, was on trumpet. Right. And, and Joseph Bridgewater was on trumpet. Joseph Bridgewater. And Violet Bastine. Violet Bastine. And... We had uh, what about Joe Fletcher on tenor? Joe Fletcher was was a tenor player. And this is what really surprised me: Richard Waters' father, Richard Waters, Sr. that we knew, was right. on trombone. He was on trombone. And uh, uh, what about Arnett Cobb? Arnett Cobb was on saxophone. Wow, star studded. And and you mentioned Joseph Bridgewater. Uh -huh. The second trumpet was Henry Bouzier. Talk. Tell me a little bit about Henry Henry uh, Bouzier. Well, Henry Bouzier was a, a, a went to it was a Phil Water, left his whole family played uh, all their siblings played music. He played trumpet and his sister played tenor saxophone. His brother played uh, Spencer Boot played trombone. Mm -hmm. Anyway, when after he graduated from Wheatley High School, right, he went to New York. Straight to New York. Straight to New York. Mm. To try to play, and he stayed up there. He played in Dizzy Gillespie's big band up there for a while. He wow. was a good friend of Mel Jackson. Uh, he and Mel Jackson studied together, and uh, he came back after a while. Did he ever play with Milt Larkin? Did who? Henry Bouzier. I don't know. I really okay. don't know whether he played with Milt. Milt Larkin was up there at the time with Bouzier. They were both in New York at the same time. I got you. But I don't know whether they played together or not. And so, uh, he came back here and he was subsequently made a, uh, he was the a &R man for Roby. How about that? For, for Mr. Don Roby and Duke and, and Peacock. Yeah, Duke and Peacock Records. 
Right. Was that about the time that uh, Bobby Bland was getting in there, or before yeah, before I, that? I kind of get get, get the, the dates. The it's dates okay. Times <laughs> it's okay. Mixed up. I ain't mad at <laughs> you. Oh, That's what over there. Tupac said. I ain't mad at you. Man, uh, Joe Scott was there when, when Joe, Joe Scott, Scott was, was okay. there before Henry. I see. Henry Buzik. That, that, that does Henry put it in Scott. perspective. Yeah, after Joe Scott left. Like, I see what you're saying. What happened? But then Bridgewater played, and then Valley Bastine came back to town. I got you. And Valley Bastine was was on the road with with uh, Eddie Clean and Vincent. Okay. Back. Okay. So they all came back, and uh, and we know Eddie Eddie did play with uh, Milt Larkin, no, didn't he? Uh, I don't know. Okay. Was, no problem. Those guys before my time. Okay. All right. Well, <laughs> I, I, they, they, they could be before your time. <laughs> they were ahead of me. That's all right. <laughs> how old are you now, Mr. Phelps? Eighty-six years old. And in your right mind, how about uh, that? Getting up every day. Well, we got some. We got some footage that proved that you was in your right mind. You may have forgot about the song, but you sure were playing. <laughs> and I heard the original there just a minute ago. We were we were just listening yeah. to the original play. You were playing really good. Yeah, uh, you know, you've always been my inspiration because I remember out at the uh, out at the sound stage when Stank and them were playing. You took me to the side and say, "Look, man, well, you, you know anything about this song here? You know what you played? Like Sunny." I never will forget you showed us like Sonny, when you know, and I've been playing that song ever since. You you took us to the side, and I understand you you mentor uh, a, a great tenor saxophone players here. Well, actually, tenor and tenor soprano and flute, uh, Kyle Turner. You you've mentored him to a degree, haven't you? Uh, I, I knew of him. I, you know, we, yeah, we didn't we didn't get together that much. You didn't, but you no. you, you you helped him out a little bit along the way. Some I some, some song. That with, uh, huh? Yeah, I was came up with uh, Harold Austin and those guys. Uh, Harold Austin that we just uh, saw on that Dickie DVD. Boy, Dickie Boy Lily. Okay, okay, fantastic. And McLeod was one of the trombone players in. Okay, uh, what's McLeod's first name? I don't really know, know his first name. That's okay. But he and Jimmy Harrison mm -hmm. was in that band. Okay. And, uh, I'm talking about Cedric's band. Right. Uh huh. Then. I, I only occasion I had to play a gig I had with Cedric was he and I and Ben Turner, who was the drummer. Right. We had a gig out on uh, West Dallas. Okay. Called One Step Beyond. The name oh, of the club that's was One, One Step, Step Beyond. Beyond. <laughs> oh, boy. It used to be a TV program. I got a chance, huh? got a chance to play with Cedric just as, as a combo. You know, so. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, Sound like a fabulous man. man. Uh, I forgot to tell you that the, the, the uh, drama, the original drama, was uh, I can't think of the guy's name. I can't the names miss me. That's okay. I, I don't remember him now. Duke Barker. Duke Barker, right? Duke Barker, well, Duke. Duke was the the original drama. the original drama for Cedric Haywood. That's right, Duke. And I Barker. guess he went on to New Orleans to, to he bigger and better things. Play with the Dukes of Dixon Land and, he and, and all the Korea. all the greats. Yeah, down in New Orleans, he left here and went to New Orleans. But he was the original drummer uh, because Joseph Bridgewater was was see uh, when Cedric came back, he didn't know anything about any musicians in Houston. Right. Because he had been gone a long time. So they kind of put it so together for him. They put, they put it together. They left, left, left it up to Bridgewater and, and and some of the guys that were here in Houston for a long time to to, to get a band. I some see. Get a band together. Yeah. That's good. It was a good band, but it was a good book, and uh, he he wrote some good charts. Right. And I, I still say the TSU missed out. Still missed because, out. You know, even though he didn't have the credentials academically, right? You know, he had the knowledge musically, right? To to, 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 to yeah. impart to anybody who yeah. went to TSU. Yeah, that's right. How to arrange the melody oh, and how to arrange, put the put yeah. that put that tenor above the trumpet, for example, yeah. in terms of the voicing, you know that kind of stuff. You know how to write. Yeah. You know how to write and you know how to play too. He's a good pianist. Okay. Also. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the main thing. Yeah, so good soloist. Yeah, he's good, good. He knew all. He knew. He, uh, he similar. Uh, the music that he wrote was in the vein of uh, 
another arranger. Uh, he's got a big, he wrote for big bands. I can't call his name right now. Not Oliver Nelson, was it? Not Oliver Nelson. It's, oh man, I got, I got, I got album in that bind. Uh, but he was West Coast. Okay. He came out of Mississippi, trumpet player. Oh, okay. Played with uh, uh, some of those uh, 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 Jimmy Lopes and those kind of guys. Gotcha. Like Ran Ran uh, uh, it, I got his you. name will come to me. It will. It'll come to us. And we'll, we'll add to the video if we get it later. Anything else you want to tell us about Cedric Haywood and the band that's, that's, and your experience? That's about all. Uh, I told you who was all, as far as I know, who all was in the band. Uh, uh, as, as far as I can remember. Right. Bruce, I didn't tell you that Bruce Sard, Bruce Sard who went, went into administration in HISD was... Right. Was what did Bruce Sard player. play? He was a first alto player. Was this uh, related to uh, uh, he, Bruce Sard? No, they weren't related. They weren't related. Guitar, no. I got you. This guy, yeah, he went into administration for HISD. Yeah, and who was at post office? Who's at the who post worked, office? Who, who worked for the post office? Uh, my, uh, well, Richard Water Sr. worked for right, the Right, that's what you were telling me, yeah. yeah he was, he so was they there. had professional jobs during the during the day and it would, yeah, they just, would work. Yeah. But they were professional musicians also. Oh, yeah, well, they had been on the road with some of the name, acting their own band, and they decided to come back home, you know. Just, settle down. Just settle down. So, and... Uh, and those were opportunities that existed for black folks then, at the, I guess, at that time, the post yeah. office. And post office, yeah. yeah. Uh, of course, Arnie Cobb, he, he, he just made a living playing, playing music, simple music. He didn't have a side job or nothing right. like that. Collecting royalties. Frankie, Frankie Lyons was a baritone player. I got you. Frankie, Frankie Lyons. Lyons. Okay, see, I didn't get that last Frankie time. Frankie Lyons. Mm-hmm. And, of course, uh, Maybe Harold Austin played baritone with, with the band gotcha. for a while. Gotcha. And uh, uh, I think Calvin Owens was in the, right. also in the trumpet section. Gotcha. And uh, I did. Did I mention uh, the, the, the third trumpet player? Third trumpet player. Uh, let's see here. As I'm looking at my notes. Uh, you mentioned the second trump player. That was Bruce Bouzet. yeah. Who was the third trump player? Uh, he came back here too. I, I told you he used to play with, with, with Eddie Benson. Yeah, yeah, you told us. You mentioned, was that Valley Bastine? Valley Bastine, that's yeah, right. Valley yeah. Bastine was there. That's all right. Yeah. Well, I think we've given the people a good glimpse for this month as it's winding up. Actually, we've got one more day. I'm gonna try uh, to get this posted to to YouTube so we can have something on there okay. about Cedric Haywood, and okay. we're just blessed to have you being able to talk about it. Yeah, I, I was right there with him. And yeah, I was thinking, he was he was he was a, I, I had never played any music like that before. Right. Arrangements, original. Arrangements, original arrangement. The way he voiced things and and uh, how good his hand was yeah, in terms you could read it. Yeah, he had a good penmanship. Right, good clear. A good clear penmanship. Right. right. And uh, they, they, the band was hit, even after his death. Uh, the band was carried on for some time after, wow. after he died. Sonny Boy Franklin had the band after after Sonny I got death, you. and then Sonny Boy died, and I, it just kind of the things kind of his book kind of just kind of dissipated. I got you. you know. I got you. Well, we sure thank you, uh, okay. Mr. Robert Phelps, for your very entertaining and, and 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 very uh, very exhaustive good memory on your on this history here. Yeah, I we sure thank you here. All right, All right. take care of yourself.